As I write this, I do so with a real sense of excitement. We have finally thrown off the shackles of the EU which had so dominated everything we do and are now a sovereign nation, making our own laws and finally out of the EU customs union and its single market. This has been a long journey for many of us. When I entered Parliament 29 years ago, I decided the Maastricht Treaty was a monumental power grab by the EU and couldn't support it. I said that the UK would one day be forced to leave the EU because it was becoming a superstate. With each treaty that followed, centralizing more and more power in Brussels, different UK governments became experts in misleading the British people, claiming that they hadn't given up power when they had, feeding the EU's insatiable appetite for more control. In 1975 I, like many others was persuaded that the UK was just going to join a marketplace which would help grow our economy. Yet many in the political establishment knew only too well that the real purpose of the EU was to create a supranational state of Europe. In 1947 Lord Thornycroft expressed this view when he wrote that, the people must be led slowly and unconsciously into the abandonment of their traditional economic defenses, not asked. It is worth recalling as we now leave, how not everyone was taken in, perhaps now almost lost in the mists of time, in the run to our joining the EEC, common market. In 1973, the Express was almost alone amongst the national newspapers in opposing the UK's entry. I recall this vividly because my father, who served with Max Aitken, both were fighter pilots during the war, often spoke about his friend's brave loan campaign. Max Aitken had taken over the running of the papers from his famous father, Lord Beaverbrook. As I write in this paper today, I am sorry neither of them have lived to see this day. For now beyond the reach of the EU's enforcer, the European Court of Justice, the UK can now start to reshape itself to take advantage of our new freedoms. To that end, as I woke up I was pleasantly surprised to see that immediately the government, using its newfound authority, has banned the use of the controversial electric pulse fishing by EU vessels, which have been devastating the seabed. Also the Chancellor has said he will now abolish the hated EU tampon tax and live animal exports are set to be banned by the end of the year. Real down payments on the change which is to come. A little while ago the Centre for Social Justice published a comprehensive paper on what had happened to the UK economically over decades. It showed how the UK has become deeply unbalanced both regionally and economically. Perhaps the most startling factor emerges that whilst London and the South East have amongst the highest productivity in Europe, the rest of the regions of the UK don't even reach the average for the UK. Leveling up is critical and the installing of free port status to many of our coastal towns would be a good start. Why not use the billions of pounds of cohesion fund spending, now ours again, to help fuel infrastructure investment in those areas left behind. The point here is there are many opportunities now open to us. For example, the UK is very good at artificial intelligence and biotechnology. Why not give that a huge boost? To do this we should reform the EU rules on capital usage, which constrain financial institutions. This would make it simpler for all technology startups which need investment if they are to grow. Finally, financial regulation and the incredibly onerous data protection rules should be reformed. This would benefit industry across the UK, even in Europe. Some are looking on in admiration. Alexander von Schoenberg, editor of Bild, Germany's best-selling newspaper has written, just because someone has tangled hair, is prone to bursting into Latin and has a somewhat chaotic private life doesn't mean they cannot be a statesman of historic importance. Europeans of all stripes now know Johnson as the man who stood up to the behemoth that is the European bloc and, against all the odds, won the day for his country. He is right. Our future is what we make it. The UK is an outward global trading nation which found itself for 47 years in the grip of a protectionist organization. We know that global free trade has done more to reduce poverty and improve the quality of life than anything else. Now our challenge is to seize the day and make that happen for everyone in the UK.